brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. What if I told you that faithful laity were being barred from praying the rosary from the cathedral in their own diocese? Would you be that surprised? Would you want to know why? What if I told you that Father James Altman and Archbishop Carlo Maria Viganò were involved in this story to some degree? We have such a story to talk about today. It's a really kind of strange story, and it comes from right here where I am in the United States. And it involves faithful Catholics who want the church back from the modernists, who have been running the church into the ground for sev the past several decades. The story also involves, in a weird way, Cardinal Supich and Cardinal Bernadine. It's a story about direct action being taken by the laity, and the increasingly strange response from their bishop. So let's dive into this. Our story takes us to Peoria, Illinois, where a bishop has closed his cathedral to Catholics who want to come in and pray the Holy Rosary. There's a reason he did this, just it's not a very good reason. There's a march planned at the end of September in Peoria, Illinois, called the March for Catholics. If you're fed up with the Ted McCarrick's, Pastor Jimmy Martin's, and the various antics of Francis in the church and on the world stage, then it's a march that may be of interest to you, and I'll have details in my show notes today. At return to tradition.org, that's the name of this podcast with a .org at the end. There are two guest speakers now that you might have heard of, and you probably guessed them by now, both of whom will likely be addressing the crowd remotely, Archbishop Viganò and Father James Altman. The details of the march are a bit vague at this time, but part of the march includes those in attendance coming to the cathedral in Peoria and praying a single decade of the rosary. No big deal, that'll take if done slowly in public, maybe five minutes. And this is where the march organizers have gotten into trouble with their bishop. Before I get into that, a little about the march organizers is kind of key to our story. March for Catholics is being organized by the hosts of a podcast called Our Warpath, which is a Catholic podcast that talks about the kinds of things you tend to hear on this show and shows like it. Things that we talk about here in the sort of the harder line maybe recognize and resist and adjacent sort of groups. In other words, it's a traditionalist show, which means the hosts are guilty of being rigid guardians of tradition with the goal of being rigid neo-pharisaical restorationists. You get the idea. Hosted by Joe Riggi and Joe Mackey, Mackey, I'm not sure, I don't know how to pronounce your names, gentlemen, let me know. <laughs> They've had interviews with Abby Johnson and Rachel Fulton Brown. The question I have is that since the show hasn't had that many episodes, how many people were they expecting to get to come to the march? I don't really have any idea how big this podcast is, but it's got maybe a dozen episodes. What were the stated reasons given by the bishop for not allowing them to pray the rosary in the cathedral? <laughs> we'll go over that. These are, they were ever fluid and ever changing. And how did they get Archbishop Viganò and Father Altman to address the march? Those are questions that I have for them because I'm not certain that I could get a conversation with either of those figures if I wanted them. But here's what the March for Catholics website has to say about the event from their website. Quote, the Catholic Church is under siege, not only from the outside, but also from within. The Catholic Church in present time is under persecution, and we are not here to ask how, how you are feeling at such a time or to coddle you. We are here to ask, are you ready to fight back? Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to take a stand and defend Almighty God and his church? Over the past few years, Catholics have been asking the same questions. How can we hold our Catholic leadership accountable? How can we fight back? How can we take a stand, profess our faith, and make a difference? Now is your chance. Our warpath is ready to fight. We will be hosting the first National March for Catholics in Peoria, Illinois, September 29th and 30th of 2022. The enemy wants to divide us, and so we must unite, march, and demonstrate to the world that we do indeed dare to be Catholic and we will stop at nothing until all things are restored in Christ, end quote. A little dramatic? Sure, but it's not wrong. Enemies within and from without the church are battering the spotless bride of Christ. We don't need to put up with it, not anymore. We only need to see the latest stories from Supich trying to force traditional priests to swear Francis's new oath for modernism to see that. While some procedural details are missing here, it appears that the podcast hosts or organizers for the march try to get permission from the Bishop of Peoria to use his cathedral for their prayer. That bishop is Bishop Louis Tilka, who often introduces himself as Bishop Lou. 
He was named coadjutor Bishop of Peoria by Francis in 2020, and then Bishop Proper earlier this year when his predecessor resigned. So he's relatively new to the diocese. There's not much out there about Bishop Tilka, good or bad, except for these little strange did tidbits connecting Tilka to some rather nasty figures in the modern church. Bishop Tilka was ordained a priest by Cardinal Bernadin, who was himself accused of being a devotee of Satan and of having committed various acts related to the service of Satan, including by a woman who said she was the Agnes character in Father Malachi Martin's Windswept House in the infamous first chapter of that book. If you've read that book, you know what I'm talking about. Bishop Tilka was consecrated bishop by one of Bernadine's successors, Cardinal Supich. With all that in mind, Bishop Tilka issued this statement about Bishop McElroy getting promoted back in May. From Bishop Tilka's Twitter account, quote, Congratulations, Cardinal Designate Bishop McElroy. I recall your very fine talk a few years ago to the NFPC about the pastoral theology of Pope Francis. You share his pastoral heart, which makes you deserving of this honor. End quote. Ah, yes, Bishop McElroy and his famous pastoral heart. That's alarming. Keep an eye on Bishop Tilka. Maybe he'll be a fine pastor for Peoria, or maybe he'll become another little soupage. Hopefully not a new Bernadette. Which brings us back to the March for Catholics. A recent post on their website describes what happened to them when they tried to get permission to have access to the cathedral for their march. Bear in mind that the McElroy statement I just gave to you, and remember that Archbishop Vigano and Father Altman are going to be in attendance, if not remotely. Quote, The bishop, who appears more Protestant and relativistic than Catholic, has banned Catholics from praying at the Cathedral of St. Mary or any other parish within the diocese. Bishop Louis Tilka refused to speak directly to representatives of Catholic podcast and website Our Pot Warpath after denying access to the cathedral for prayer for participants in the March for Catholics. Imagine a Catholicism where prayer is forbidden. That is precisely the thing which is happening in Peoria. The prayer of faithful Catholics has been forbidden inside of the churches. The March for Catholics, scheduled to be held in Peoria, Illinois, September 29th and 30th, is an event hosted by Our Warpath and designed to take a stand against heresy and watered-down Catholicism. It is organized to promote orthodoxy and stand against a soft Catholicism which blends in with the culture rather than transforming it as Christ commissioned the church. Joe Riggi, president of Our Warpath, said the diocese heard the event was being held and banned them from the parishes and cathedrals. Tilka refused to speak to Riggi or anyone associated with Our Warpath regarding the denial. Diocesan attorney Patricia Gibson, on behalf of the bishop, called Riggi and informed him the diocese would not allow those in attendance to come and pray inside the cathedral or at any other parish in the diocese. All we were wanting to do was come to the cathedral and pray a decade of the rosary, and we would all hold the other events at the hotel, said Riggi. End quote. The bishop who called McElroy a man with a pastoral heart barred attendees of this march from using any parish in the diocese for praying a single decade of the rosary. I'm not terribly surprised by this turn of events. The baleful eyes of Francis and his Soromon in Chicago, Cardinal Supich, are watching. This begs an obvious question. What happened when the host of that podcast asked the bishop why they couldn't pray in the cathedral? <laughs> That's when the lies and excuses began, according to their account of it. From their website, quote, Riggi said the diocese initially made up excuses, even lying, to our warpath about the reasons they could not use the cathedral. Initially, Riggi said he was informed by Phil Lee, director of divine worship, that the cathedral would be, not be able to secure enough volunteers to help with a large group of people. Riggi countered by offering to pay the volunteers in order to ensure that they could get enough to help. Following the failure of that excuse, Gibson later told Riggi that the cathedral would conveniently be, conveniently be under construction those days and would be closed. When asked about the use of other parishes due to the construction of the cathedral, the diocese refused to answer right away, and then Gibson blatantly refused Riggi by stating it was because of their guest speakers, there it is, the diocese was refusing the participants the opportunity to pray. When asked if the bishop would provide a written statement regarding the exact nature of, of reasoning for denying Catholics the opportunity to pray in the cathedral, the bishop refused. Gibson wrote an email to Riggi stating, in part, I was able to talk with Bishop Lou today, and he is satisfied that you and I have spoken and will not be providing any further written communication, Gibson wrote. In addressing the keynote speaker, Father James Altman, Gibson said, the word was dubious and was used in relation to our conversation about letters of suitability and being in good standing with their own dioceses. 
However, the ban on participants of the March for Catholics from praying does not apply to Father Altman, since, according to Riggi, Altman will not be present or step inside the cathedral of any other parish. The diocese is banning Catholics who are in good standing with their diocese, faithful to the church, and take a stand for the orthodox teachings of the faith as passed on throughout the centuries by the saints. If Altman is not attending the prayer time inside the cathedral, then why would a diocese prevent Catholics from praying the rosary inside the cathedral? It appears it is for no other reason other than politics. End quote. I looked for a public statement from the Diocese of Peoria or from the bishop on this matter and couldn't find one. But I know the real reason. A spiritual son of Bernadine, Supich and Francis was not going to permit anything associated with Father James Altman or Archbishop Vigano to happen in the buildings of the Diocese of Peoria. Full stop. I'm honestly surprised that the hosts of that show were not told that under no circumstances that they were to march in the diocese at all, under pain of obedience. The bishop can do that, you know, by the way. Any bishop can impose silence on all matters Catholic on any relatively public Catholic in their diocese, any troublemaking Catholic in their diocese, if they live in that diocese, obviously. They could do that. Bishop Tilka could do that to the hosts of our warpath. Conceivably, my bishop could do that to me here in the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. <laughs> Whether the person in question obeys or not is up to the people being censured. But Bishop Tilka could take that action. Kind of surprised he hasn't. If you're part of the show, Our Warpath, email me if you care if you can about this, because I'm curious if things have escalated. I can't find your contact information, so I'll just ask you publicly here for a statement. And if anyone from the Diocese of Peoria wants to issue a statement, please do so. A lot of people are now very curious about this. But there is this from the Our Warpath website that shows what this is all about. The fight for orthodoxy in the church, as we've alluded to already of the fight for the authentic Catholic faith, the same faith as our forebears. This is about resisting and defeating modernism and doing something, anything, concrete about beyond talking about the problem. From that article, quote, it should come as no surprise, considering the overall tone of Catholic clergy in the United States and around the world, that a diocese will prevent Catholics from praying if those Catholics disagree with a sin-touting and supporting bishop. Tilka is a major promoter of the Protestant-driven video teaching series called Alpha, even making it the base of formation for catechetical instruction previously. However, the series is Protestant, created with a quote-unquote Catholic version added for later profit. The Alpha series tacks on watered-down Catholicism teaching at the end of the same program the Protestant version promotes. It does not teach about the sacraments, the necessity of the priesthood, establishment of the first papacy in Peter by Jesus, creation of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, or any other essential core Catholic teachings. It's basically a Protestant program under the guise of quote-unquote Catholic, which intends and successfully accomplishes to cause Catholics who are weak in their faith and poorly catechized to become Protestants, end quote. Tilke has also allegedly said that his favorite figures in the church today include Bishop Dare We Hope All Are Saved Baron and Father Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church, and that says quite a lot. So again, since I couldn't find a good contact information for the podcast host, if you're seeing this, send me an email. I'd love to get an update on this situation. As for the rest of everyone out there, I'm curious what you think about this. I'll have links to the March website and their articles in my show notes today at returntotradition.org. That's the name of this podcast with a .org at the end. Look for the post of today's video in the title, and you'll get the information you're seeking right there. But I want to know what you think about all this. I want to know what you think about Father Altman and Archbishop Vigano teleconferencing in to this march. Do you think that the diocese is in the right for barring the faithful of that diocese from engaging in any march-related activities, diocesan property? Are you surprised that the bishop said, hey, your guests are kind of the problem here? Do you think Tilka should have just avoided drama and headlines by quietly letting them come inside and pray? Do you think there's the threat of external pressure being applied here? Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.